So, but the point I'm making is that, you know, it's very difficult to underestimate the amount of human motivation that's embedded in the attempt to alleviate suffering, to eradicate disease, to help people live a healthy, a healthy life, and, well, that's the disease, obviously, but to live a long life as well and to make things as peaceful as possible. I mean, you can be cynical about people and you can talk about them as motivated by power and being corrupt and all of those things, and all of those things are true, but you shouldn't throw away the baby with the bathwater because we have been striving for a very long time to set things right, and we've done actually not too bad a job of it for half-starving, crazy, insect-ridden chimpanzees with lifespans of 50 to 70 years. So, you know, we could deserve a bit of sympathy for our position as far as I'm concerned. So... <laughs> Some other representations. This one I like, the one on the left. That's paradise. Paradise has a walled garden, and that's what paradise means. It's paradesa, which is, I don't remember the language. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's associated with Persian. Paradesa means walled garden. And why a walled garden? Well, it goes back to the chaos order idea. So this is where God puts man and woman after the creation in a walled garden. Well, the wall is culture and order, and the garden is nature. And the idea is the proper human habitat is nature and culture in balance. And so, well, we like gardens. Well, why? Because, well, they're not completely covered with weeds and mosquitoes and black flies, right? So they're, they're civilized a little bit, but still within that civilization, nature... In, in, in its more benevolent guise, is encouraged to flourish, and people find that rejuvenating. And so the idea that paradise, the proper habitat of a human being, is a, is a walled garden is a good one. And it's walled because, well, you want to keep things out, right? I mean, raccoons, for example. You want, you want to keep those things out, man, even though it's impossible. And, you know, you don't, you don't want... Well, there's all sorts of things you don't want in your garden, like snakes. Walls don't seem to be much use against them. But the idea the, that paradise is a walled garden is, is a, 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 an echo back to the chaos order idea. Walls, culture, right? Garden, nature. So the proper human habitat is a properly tended garden. Now, the radical left-leaning anti-theist environmentalists tend to make the case that the predations of the Western capitalist system are a consequence of the injunction that was delivered in Genesis by God to man to go out and dominate the earth. David Suzuki has talked a lot about this, by the way. They believe that that statement has given rise to our inappropriate assumption that we have the right to exert control over the world and that that's what's turned us into these terrible predatory monsters, sometimes described as cancers on the face of the earth or viruses that have inhabited the entire ecosystem who are doing nothing but wandering everywhere and wreaking havoc as rapidly as we possibly can, which is another perspective on the essential element of humankind that I find absolutely deplorable. I mean, if you look at the historical record, for example, even casually, you'll find out that as early as as late as the late 1800s, 1895 thereabouts, Thomas Huxley, who was Aldous Huxley's grandfather and a great defender of Darwin, prepared a report for the British government on ocean sustainability. And his conclusion was, oh, fish away, guys, man. There are so many fish out there. The oceans are so inexhaustible that no matter how hard humanity tried for, for any number of years, the probability that we could do more than put a dent in what was out there was zero. Now, Huxley turned out to be wrong. He didn't realize that our population was going to spike so dramatically, partly because we got a little bit rich and our children stopped dying at the rate of like 60% before they were one years old. And, you know, we actually managed to populate the, the, the earth with a few people, but it wasn't really until 1960 or so that we woke up to the fact that there were so many of us that we actually had to start paying attention to what we were doing to the planet. And that's like, what, 50 years ago? Well, we've just started to develop the technology, the wherewithal to understand that the whole world might be well considered a garden and we need to live inside the proper balance between culture and order or culture and, and, and chaos. Before that, we were spending all of our time just trying not to die and usually very unsuccessfully. So 